This is a vernal pool. So is this. And this. What is a vernal pool? A vernal pool is usually smaller than a pond, sometimes not much bigger than a large puddle, usually temporary, and provides critical habitat for many vertebrate and invertebrate species. Because vernal pools are temporary, usually drying up during the hot summer months, they do not support fish populations. The lack of fish makes life easier for many other species. Fish are efficient predators of many invertebrates and also eat the eggs of many amphibians. Some vertebrate and invertebrate species, most notably wood frogs and fairy shrimp, are so intolerant of fish predation that they require vernal pools in order to reproduce. Vernal pools play an important role in the ecology of Massachusetts. But just as importantly, they capture our imaginations and childlike need for exploration and adventure if we stop even briefly to look into the water. Because of their unique characteristics, vernal pools are home to species that live and breed only in vernal pools. This is a unique and specialized habitat that you can help protect. Spend even a short time looking into a vernal pool and you'll agree that we need to protect these amazing habitats and educate others so that everyone can come to appreciate the world of the vernal pool. The certifying of vernal pools is administered by the Massachusetts Natural Heritage and Endangered Species Program, or Natural Heritage. This is the agency that determines whether a given pool meets or does not meet criteria for protection as a certified vernal pool. You are the first step in this certification process. Finding and certifying vernal pools is done almost entirely by volunteers. You can find vernal pools almost anywhere, and you probably already have some idea of where to start looking in your own area. Areas marked as wetlands on topographic maps are good places to start looking. Another good place to start is with the Massachusetts Aerial Photo Survey of Potential Vernal Pools. This is a map produced by Natural Heritage showing likely places for finding vernal pools. It can be viewed using Google Earth or with GIS mapping software. Once you've found a pool that you believe should be certified as a vernal pool, you must document the evidence and submit that evidence to Natural Heritage for consideration. What evidence does Natural Heritage require? Basically, you need to prove three things. First, that the pool is an isolated basin depression. This means that it's not a bend in a river, a bay in a large lake, or in any other way a section of some larger body of water. You can show that the pool is an isolated basin depression by taking a photograph that shows that the pool has no outlet. If the pool is small enough, one photograph may clearly show this. If the pool is larger, it may take two or three photos. If the pool is very large or very irregular, you may have to take a number of overlapping photos. Second, you must show that the pool provides critical breeding habitat for vernal pool species. How you show this depends on which species are in your pool. Here is the list of species Natural Heritage would like you to look for in your pool. The list can be divided into two groups. The obligate species are the species that absolutely depend on vernal pools for all or some part of their life cycle. The facultative species are the species that prefer vernal pools but can make use of other habitats for reproduction if they need to. So how do you show that you have vernal pool species breeding in your pool? Let's take the simplest case first. If you can show that adult fairy shrimp are in your pool, a photo or video of the fairy shrimp is sufficient evidence of a breeding population. Be sure to properly document your find. Take good clear photos of the adult fairy shrimp. You may have to capture one or more in a bucket or tray in order to get a good photo. Maybe you don't have fairy shrimp, but you have wood frogs. Male wood frogs call to the female with duck-like quacks. 
An audio recording of this call is evidence of a breeding population, although the recording must be of a chorus of frogs, not just of a single individual. Specifically, the call must be constant, continuous, and overlapping. In other words, if you can record a few minutes of a wood frog chorus, you have your evidence of a breeding population of wood frogs. A second way to document a breeding population of wood frogs is to photograph five or more mated pairs. Typically, the smaller males clasp the larger females from behind. This is called amplexus and may last for 24 to 72 hours. The male releases sperm into the water as the female lays the eggs. Maybe you don't have fairy shrimp or wood frogs in your pond, but you have one of the obligate species of salamanders. There are a few ways to document a breeding population of salamanders. The four obligate salamanders, the spotted salamander, the blue spotted salamander, the Jefferson salamander, and the marbled salamander, all belong to the same genus, Ambystoma, and share many physical and behavioral characteristics. At mating time in early spring, three of these species of salamanders, the spotted salamander, the blue spotted salamander, and the Jefferson salamander congregate in large groups called congresses. If you can photograph one of these congresses, this is evidence of a breeding population. During this congressing, the males deposit packets of sperm called spermatophores on debris in the water. The female picks up these spermatophores and uses them to fertilize the eggs. Photos of the spermatophores attached to debris are evidence of a breeding population of obligate salamanders. Once the salamander eggs are fertilized, the female will lay a mass of eggs embedded in a matrix of jelly. A total of at least five egg masses is necessary to prove that there's a breeding population of obligate amphibians. The five egg masses do not have to be from the same species of obligate amphibians. Photos of five egg masses in any combination from any of the obligate amphibians, including the wood frog, is evidence of a breeding population of obligate species. You might have three wood frog egg masses and two Jefferson salamander egg masses, or three blue spotted salamander egg masses and two of the spotted salamander. As long as you have five egg masses from the obligate amphibian species, you have your evidence. This also means that you don't have to be sure about which species of obligate amphibian laid the eggs as long as you're sure the eggs are from one of the obligate amphibians. The eggs hatch into free-swimming larvae with gills and tails. Photos of any number of these larvae, or of transforming juveniles still having remnants of gills and or tails, is evidence of a breeding population. An important point to note is that three of the four species of obligate salamanders are listed in Massachusetts as threatened or of special concern. Finding even one egg mass of a blue spotted salamander, a Jefferson salamander, or a marbled salamander is evidence of a breeding population. Fairy shrimp, wood frogs, and salamanders make up the obligate vernal pool species, the species that depend on vernal pools for survival. What if you don't have any of these species in your pool? but you have facultative species. In this case, you may still be able to certify your pool, but you'll have to show that you have at least two facultative species breeding in the pool. And what constitutes evidence of breeding for a facultative species? The requirements are similar to the requirements for obligate species. Audio recordings of chorusing, photos or videos of five or more mated pairs in imp plexus, any number of egg masses, any number of larvae, or any number of juveniles still in the pool with the tail remnants is sufficient evidence of breeding. But remember, for facultative species, you must provide this evidence for at least two different species. The third thing you must prove to certify your vernal pool is that the pool does not support a fish population. This might seem like a difficult thing to prove, but there are in fact a couple of ways to show that fish are absent from the pool. You can show that the pool is temporary. A temporary pool of water cannot support an ongoing fish population. Take a photograph of your pool when it's dry. Another way to prove the absence of fish is to show that the pool contains species that do not tolerate fish. How do you do that? 
The reason obligate species depend upon vernal pools for survival is because they can't tolerate fish. Fish are efficient predators of fairy shrimp and the amphibian eggs and larvae. If you were able to show that you have a breeding population of obligate species in the earlier step, then you don't have to show that your pool dries up. A breeding population of obligate species is proof of the absence of fish.